Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. You already know, over here we're enjoying the new DLC stuff, messing around with a lot of the new Pokemon, having a good time with it. If you're interested in this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It only takes you a second. I'm trying to get the 300k subs eventually, and I appreciate all the support. Anyway, today I got a really fun match for you. I'll tell you what, Conkeldur has straight up weapons, and this Mon is a menace and should be treated as such. We're going up against an opponent that's bringing a nice little range shenanigans team, and uh, it turns out to be a pretty good one, so let's get into it. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Ariados. You know what is absolutely crazy? With the new DLC, Ariados is exactly the same. This thing comes out as a lead, sets up Sticky Web, and that's just, the poor guy doesn't get anything too great. But what is unfortunate about this is that my team actually has no way to deal with uh, getting rid of Hazard. So what I'm going to do is I decide to lead off with the Monkey Dory, knowing that this thing was probably the lead. Uh, I can fire off a nice little spec psychic here. That does knock it to its focus ash, which then allows it to set up the sticky web. So it's always unfortunate knowing that I'm going to have to deal with basically the entire game, uh, knowing that my Pokemon are going to be definitely slow. So that does suck. However, um, Aerido is going to go for that sucker punch here just to get a little bit of last damage as it goes down, which actually does a bunch of damage to Monkey. Uh, but I am able to finish it off with a nice little psychic. So Aridos goes down. Uh, but now they get a free switch into whatever they want. And I gotta deal with getting caught up in webs all damn day, which is annoying. So, they decide to go into the Empoleon. Our little penguin buddy these days is actually pretty popular and kind of uh, kind of tearing it up right now. There's a couple different things that this thing can do. I imagine it might be uh, something like I'm running in terms of like an agility competitive kind of sweeper guy. You know who does not give a shit about penguins? That is my dude Mo over here. They straight up gave a Pokemon weapons. This thing just carries around... Cinder blocks, or just slabs of concrete. It seems pretty unfair, honestly. If you take away this thing's cinder block, it's not, it's not that scary of a mon. But instead, you gotta now just be afraid of getting absolutely pummeled by this shit. So, they decide to go for the flip turn there. That is a new move that uh, Empoleon does get access to. Nice little water type U-turn. And they decide to go into the, the bubblegum flavored Politoed. So, of course, you know, Politoed being back, there's more options for rain teams here to get up that drizzle. Which is exactly what happens. They go ahead and fire off an Ice Beam here, potentially expecting a switch, I imagine. Uh, but I just stay in and go for a Drain Punch. I know that I can take definitely even a Water Attack in the rain. Uh, and then fire off that Drain Punch and get a lot of my HP back. Which is exactly what happens. The, the longevity of this dude is insane. Even being burnt with that Guts, we're able to get so much damage. And then it has priority in the turn in the form of Mach Punch. And uh, Conkeldur is a problem, dude. This thing is extremely bulky if you can run like an assault vest variant i decide to go with uh with guts here just because i really like the damage so uh they do want to save the the toad for later that thing is gonna want to come in and probably get some rain up later on he is likely gonna want to be keeping this place moist which is unfortunate but they decide to bring in the vigavolt on the mock punch now i'm thinking you know i have special defense to be able to likely take an attack from this thing i can go for a knockoff and then probably get it to range to where mock punch can kill it uh, so they decide to end up going for the Bug Buzz. I'm imagining they probably expected me to switch into Torterra. Uh, the ground type switch in kind of obvious on an electric attack, but uh, it works out in my favor as Mo is just over here tearing shit up, for real. So I'm just over here wielding my weapons like an absolute gangster, crazy, veiny clown, and uh, I'm able to finish this thing off with the Mach Punch, which is actually really good. Vikavolt, it's a great Pokemon in terms of offense if it wasn't so slow. But you pair that on a team that does have the Sticky Web, uh, and that thing actually it has a pretty, you know, kind of decent shot to make a difference in a game. So, on the empty battlefield, we do see Ludicolo coming in. My dude is still dancing, still looking amazing, and it is back with the DLC, which is awesome. So, here's what I des decide to do. I'm going to go into Monkey Dory thinking this, this thing probably just ends up knocking me out here. I kind of just need a sack. There's nothing I can really switch in super easily to Ludicolo. Uh, but then, on a revenge switch, I can get some, some action going. So, I bring in Roger from a <laughs> from fucking American Dad. He does take a fake out here, and now I'm thinking, okay, I mean, this thing with Swift Swim definitely does outspeed, um, and I'm just basically just going to click my safest move uh, and the Psychic here, but it turns out he goes for the Giga Drain, and that means either this thing is some type of, like, support Ludicolo on a rain team, or it's just not carrying, it didn't go for the Surf or something like that. Regardless, I went for the Psychic there. It's kind of an interesting matchup here. I just switched this thing in essentially to die anyway thinking there's no way that I, I live. But I did, and I'm able to get some chip damage with the Psychic, so, you know, little Roger's out here doing the thing. And now I get to do exactly what I was looking for, and that is bring in a Revenge Switch as the rain does go away. Uh, so here's where we got a little bit of a unique opportunity. I'm able to bring in Empoleon, and if you're familiar with the new Teal Mask DLC, Empoleon now gets the ability Competitive, meaning any time a stat is dropped, 
I actually get a sharp boost in special attack, which is honestly amazing. They straight up buffed my boy and Empoleon is like super viable now. The problem is I still have super low speed uh, coming in on that sticky web. So uh, I know I can take an attack from this Ludicolo or at least a few. So I am going to go for an agility and uh, get, that clean, get that clean boost in the speed. Uh, which brings me back a little bit, but still I'm not going to be faster than everything on their team just because of that sticky web. So I'm thinking maybe I just go for uh, a second agility here, try to get as much as possible, and see what I can do, you know, with the Empoleon in the late game. I know that they have a couple different things to stop this, but uh, I mean, if there's a time to get the Empoleon going, the time is now. So the Dancing Mexican Pineapple does end up going for a Leech Seed here, which is actually interesting. I did not expect... Um, a, a leech seed kind of rain Ludicolo, but you know This thing is here for the support and Empoleon is fine with it because with that competitive boost uh, An ice beam should definitely be enough to take this thing out and uh, I fear that I don't have enough either power or health to be able to kind of get the Empoleon sweep going But it's just cool regardless to see uh, kind of the interesting tech on sticky web with the Empoleon especially when you have access to uh, The agility there so this thing actually ends up going for the protect so we're able to see as that is force, its fourth move, so it's going to be a Protect Leech Seed. It's going to whittle me down to below half. Plus, with my Life Orb, uh, it's, not looking, it's not looking great. But if I can at least take care of the Ludicolo here, that's a really fast Pokemon, at least in the rain, that I don't have to deal with. So, I go for the nice little Ice Beam here. It does take care of it. Um, and Empoleon does grab himself a kill. I'm glad that this thing is back. Shout out to all the Sinnoh starters. Uh, we absolutely love to see it. And I'm also excited to see what we get in this next DLC. And what they do for the, the next starters they release, it should be fun. So, now we got a little mirror match here. They bring in their Empoleon, and mine is not looking so hot. Because, you know, I'm at like half health. I know that I probably can't take an attack at this point, but I am at least faster because of the agility. Uh, and a Grass Knot is almost a two-hit KO. I was kind of just banking on uh, being able to get a two-hit KO Grass Knot on their Empoleon. And then I kind of run through their team a little bit with this thing. So, unfortunately, it doesn't happen, but we do get to see a little little Gwyn on Gwyn action, and uh, down mine goes. So, I do get myself a free switch, though. And it's really looking like this Empoleon could use some concrete and concrete accessories. So, I decided to go back into Mo, uh, who does get caught in the web, but I have the priority in the Mach Punch, and I have no reason to pretty much not go for it here. Nothing really wants to switch into it. Um, and I think, I honestly, I'm going to go for the Terra. I figure if they do end up going for the Switch, or if somehow Empoleon is able to live it, I'm just going to put a fist on my head, double that stab, and it's going to do a lot to whatever. So, uh, they basically know that nothing really wants to deal with Conkeldra at this point, and they decide to switch into uh, the Frog once again. Does make it rain, likely holding that Damp Rock, going to be making it rain on these hoes for like eight turns. But, like I said, I'm going to make myself extremely dumb looking with a nice little fist on my head. I don't know if this thing's more menacing now or just more ridiculous, but regardless, a mock punch is definitely gonna just punch this bitch right into the shadow realm where this thing belongs, and down goes the Politoed. So now they are down to two Pokemon left. That is gonna be the Torterra and the Empoleon, and it turns out, you know, Torterra is the only Pokemon that can come in here, both outspeed me and live a mock punch. Uh, so that's exactly what they do. They bring in Hurricane Tortilla, and I am going to have to basically go into my Torterra here. If this thing ends up being uh, Shell Smash with the loaded dice, it's going to be... It's going to get dicey. My, that's what my set is, so I decide to bring in my Grass Dice, and we just basically get to see what this thing wants to do. We do get caught in the Sticky Web, which means I am going to definitely be slower on this next turn. And they do go for that Shell Smash, so this is a scary situation. Torterra getting Shell Smash is probably the best thing this thing could have got. I, again... I really like Torterra. I, I kind of just like all the Sinnoh starters, but they've been overshadowed by uh, Infernape since they came out. But at this point, now Tor Torterra with the Shell Smash is an absolutely massive threat, especially pair that with the you know the loaded dice uh, with like a Bullet Seed and Rock Blast, and you're having yourself a turtle time. But uh, they're actually going to end up going for the Terra Fire here, which is um, gonna. It, it seems like a fire hazard putting a candle on top of a tree. I'm not. I mean, I guess it's raining, so it's fine. But they go for the Terra Blast, and in the rain, the Terra Fire Terra Blast not going to be enough. Lives it with 32 HP. I honestly still thought that that was going to kill after a Shell Smash, uh, and they probably did too, but in the rain, I feel like, you know, we had a good shot at living it. So I go for a Bullet Seed, not expecting to Terra Fire, uh, but we do get, you know, a, qu a quality couple hits there and able to whittle this thing down. Basically, I, I just kind of been worried about being able to get it down to the point where Mach Punch from Conkeller can finish it off, but... 
Um, you know, Grastoise is pretty much going to go down here. I do still have the Focus Sash on my Alolan Golem in the back, and that could potentially save me if this thing isn't running uh, a loaded dice move, which it doesn't look like they're loaded dice, as, you know, another Terror Blast is going to finish me off. Uh, the synergy is interesting with the Terra Fire Terror Blast in the rain. Shout out to Tony, Tony Torkel. This is uh, the dude I'm playing. He's actually a YouTuber as well. Uh, go over to his channel. His link will be in the description and let him know that uh, don't be clicking Terra Blast in the rain. But uh, now I get a free switch into whatever I like. And that is, of course, going to be Donuts. Um, I also have Choice Scarf's Chandelure in the back, but I decide to go into the Alolan Golem because, I mean, look at this fucking... This man's beard is absolutely legendary. So... Uh, what I can do is, I can hope that at least this thing isn't going to be the loaded dice set so it doesn't hit me multiple times, and then I can finish it off with a, a counter. So they are going to go for the Trailblaze, just about knocks me down to sturdy. Uh, Trailblaze is actually an interesting tech on Shell Smash Torterra because oftentimes you do need the extra speed uh, even after a Shell Smash, but I'm able to live that of course, a counter does finish it off. And this is why we love Alolan Golem, because of sturdy. Um, Built-in Focus Ash basically stops sweeps like that from happening. So the counter finishes that thing off, and their last Pokemon is going to be this Empoleon. So what I can do now is basically just activate that Custat Berry. Thank you very much, Pokemon DLC, for bringing back the Custat Berry. We love to see it. And so does Golem. I guess maybe not, because every time he just gets to explode now. So we just go full explosion on this thing, and it barely lives it. It lives it with just a sliver of health. Um, the resisted explosion, not quite enough to do it like the old days when it used to half opponent's defenses before uh, calcing the damage. So it does live it, but now that basically just opens the door up for Mo, who's out here hurting. We're burnt and on our last leg. But, you know, if there's when there's a will, there's a way, especially if you got a cool fist hat on. And one more mock punch is going to be able to finish the game. So I thought this was an interesting match uh, with, with some Pokemon that we haven't gotten to play with in a while. So I had fun with it. Let me know if you guys did as well. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. As always, don't forget to leave a like on the video. For real, the support is amazing, and I do appreciate it. Also, check out Tony's channel. Uh, this dude is out here making Wi-Fi battle videos as well. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.